Hey everybody, welcome back to my Eurovision React Review channel. So, it is Monday. I am trying my best to catch up with everything that happened at the weekend in regards to Eurovision. I've just checked out Slovenia and I thought to myself, <laughs> What else do you want to check out, Shane? And I thought to myself, what's happening in Malta? <laughs> I don't know if anyone's asking that question anymore. I know so many people inside Malta and outside of Malta have just given up on this song contest for two, two reasons, really. Um, the first one being, obviously, Aiden's departure, dramatic departure, and the fact that that's just left the door open for Brooke. So in, to what extent... I mean, a lot of people are disengaged from the beginning due to the level of songs. I don't think Malta will do that again. I think the feedback of that has hopefully hit home quite clearly. But the fact that, yeah, to what extent is this now a contest or competition with so many people saying that basically it's Brooks now anyway. Um, I'm hoping to make a case for other songs during this video. So please do <laughs> hear me out. But also... There's a lot of things I could do right now on this channel and ultimately I think what this weekend has taught me <laughs> is it's really important to just go back to doing what I enjoy. I think I've lost sight of why I started this channel and why did I start this channel? Because I love Eurovision it, and, and I don't and I shouldn't really be swayed by that. So um, maybe my choices moving forward on this channel are going to be a bit weird. But Malta, why not? But basically, I'm unapologetic about it. Pardon the pun, Jessica. I've seen you're out. I have no idea why. I thought you were a safe qualifier. Um, but I'm unapologetic about it. It's a nice contest that ultimately I have kind of had my fingers in kind of from the beginning. And I've reacted to a few quarterfinal songs already, the live performances. But I've now checked out all of the songs that have made it to the semi-final, which is happening on Thursday, I believe. We've still got, I think, like 22 songs. There's still quite a lot there. Um, and yeah, I've managed to listen to all of them in full today, leisurely, as I was kind of cooking and cleaning. And yeah, some songs, as I'm doing that, I looked, I was like, make a note of that, Shane. And I created a top 10. I did create a top 10 and, and actually I'm happy with my top 10. None of these entries in my top 10 are there because I had to fill it out. I would have done a top eight, I would have done a top five, but I did a top 10. So um, yeah, I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to do this whereby I react to a recap that's that Mizia Eurovizzi has done. And when it gets to one of the songs in my top 10, I'll stop it and I'll tell you where it is in my top 10 and why. So yeah. With further ado, let's start. In the, let's go down, see you in the mirror. I really, really like this song. I like this song from the snippet. I now know that one of the songwriters is the songwriter or one of the songwriters behind Ireland's Junior Eurovision this year, Sophie with Solas. I think that this is a good one. The, um, the melody in the chorus just stays with me. Um, it is borderline musical, but I love that. Um, so for me, this is number nine. This is number nine. It's, it touches a chord with me and my personal taste. So this is my number nine. Obviously, I have no idea what he's saying. And obviously, I can't sing or speak Maltese. Um, now, for me, this is a song that Malta should seriously consider for Eurovision. There is something about this chorus that is very, very good. So, ultimately, it's one of the two songs in Maltese. And I think there's a lot of Eurovision fans outside of Malta that is urging Malta to send a song in Maltese. I do genuinely think if you give this song to, it it still feels a little bit lacking in production. And I, I just think if you give this to a producer, and I'm not saying change the song, the, the, the melody doesn't need to change, the verse doesn't need to change, the chorus doesn't need to change. It's just the production needs shaking up a little bit, feeling a bit more kind of fresh, current, modern, and give it that spark, that polish. 
Um, but for me, there is a lot of potential in here. And I hope Maltus sees that potential as well. For me, this is my number six. And also his voice is crazy. Crazy? Great. <laughs> Um, I listened to this song for the first time in full today. And as you can imagine, there was a lot of songs that I've had to listen to today. And some of them obviously I'd listened to before, like Eliana's. But nonetheless, I hadn't heard this one before. This was the one song, as it was going for the three minutes, I was like, oh, I'm enjoying this. And then so much so when it finished, I was like, I want to listen to this again. Um, this is my number two. This is a really, 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 really good song. I think this is a song that genuinely Malta should seriously consider because there, I think there's something good here. And as a result of that, I think it, it shouldn't be Brooks to win. There should be other songs that should have it be given a chance to compete. And for me, I think this is one of them. These, this, this one is one of them. I do think that this stands a chance. I mean, with Malta, we know it's difficult at Eurovision. And, you know, with all of these songs, how many of these songs are realistically easy left-hand side of the board in the final? Question mark. So we really need to be realistic and think, okay, first, first case scenario, qualifying. And I think there is something about this song that has the chance to qualify if people give it a chance. So for me, this is my second, second place. As I said, it's been introduced me to me today and I really want to continue listening to this one. Okay, so this song is fun. A bit like um, Cities Any from Latvia last year. It was fun. I, I thought Cities Any was fun, <laughs> but ultimately, did I listen to it on the reg when it came on playlist? Did I kind of think, oh, I want to listen to that one again? Not really. It's a kind of song that you kind of gel with as you are watching the performance. Now, I do think there is something good about this song. I know that there is quite a lot of support for this song in Malta. It didn't go past me that when I was watching these videos today, I did also check how many views the videos had got. And I'd seen that this one had got quite a lot of views comparatively with others. Um, and I know people are talking about it. It's generally one of people's favorites. I really like the dance break. I mean, as an English native speaker, do I love the the in my sweater. I mean, it's tolerable at best. But nonetheless, the dance break, there's something good in that dance break and you do just kind of go with it. Um, I really, really want the lead singer to smile. <laughs> like, I do understand being quite, like, into the song and also cool and suave, which he's kind of doing. Um, but I, I, I'm here like wanting to enjoy it and then I want him to look like he's enjoying it as well. Um, so hopefully in the semi-final he smiles, but he doesn't have to. Um, but that's, and there's also, it's not a note. I'm not a producer. Um, but I've got this as number seven. I actually think this is quite good. It's fun. I don't know whether I go away and listen to it, but watching it being performed, I enjoyed. So this is my number seven. Hi, Maxine. That vocal, look, this is, we are all in the know and we can all admit that she is one talented young lady. That vocal is insane. It's not in my top 10. I, I, I mean, I, for me, I don't think the song really goes anywhere. And as a result of that, I, I couldn't even sing you the song now. I hope she comes back in the future with a song that I personally connect with more. Right. Um, Brock, um, there's no doubting, like Maxine, the voice is incredible, I mean, she looks like a pop star, the confidence that she delivers on that stage, she's ready for Eurovision, and no one would be nervous that she wouldn't be able to deliver a performance and a vocal. Is this the right song though? Like I'm always on the fence when people talk about whether Malta should allow the winning song and artist to change, winning artist to change the song. I mean, 
I still don't really want to kind of go either way on that. I can see, I can see arguments for both sides. But if she won with this and turned around and said she's changing the song, would I be secretly down, deep down inside happy about that? Probably. Does this feel like a kind of melody festival and semi-final song that would struggle to make it into the final? Yes. If this wins on Saturday, could I sit here and safely say Malta's qualifying? No. Do I feel Malta's job of qualifying is a lot harder now there's not any juries? Yes. Would this have potentially done better with juries? Yes. But for me, there are better options. There are better options in regards to song. Maybe not artists, but certainly song. Um, so let's see. But I mean, I am a bit nervous about Saturday in regards to it being a fair contest and a competitive one just in regards to obviously watching it last year in full um, when Emma won and just seeing, I understood the televote, but the juries, the landslide and the juries baffled me, how they all thought the same. I wasn't a huge fan of Out of Sight. So last year's, last year's result shocked me. If it goes the same way on Saturday with this one, will I be disappointed? Probably, probably. There are songs that I think are better options for Malta. Um, and songs that I personally connect with more. For this is my number four, after all that. It's still my number four. Shake your body, body. Shake, shake your body. Shake, shake your body. Um, yeah, do I like the song? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I am a little bit biased because I do like Matt Black, Black from last year. Um, I do follow him on Instagram. I think he's a great guy. And, and as an artist, I think he's super, super talented in regards to the vocal, but more importantly, just an entertainer. Like, you cannot not smile when you watch Matt Black. And last year, I genuinely thought his song was one of the better ones and as a result of that I think he was it, it was unjust there was a lack of justice with his result last year so one thing I'm definitely hoping is this song does much better this year because it deserves it and he deserves it as well I'm still on the fence about whether I prefer this song to last year this year there's more going on in it and ultimately I do credit it for that I kind of wish it was on Spotify I kind of really want to listen to this song more to make that kind of confirmed choice. I think there's more going on and more variety in the production than last year, but last year's song was a massive earworm. And yeah, I remember listening to it on repeat by the pool after the Madrid preview party in Gran Canaria. I was obsessed with this one. Um, I really, really, really hope that he does well because I just think he deserves it. And I think this song is one of the best songs in, in, in MESC 2023. And if it gets selected, you know he's going to put on a show. And you know the way that he'll perform it. It will stay in people's heads in Liverpool. So as a performer, again, I think he should seriously be considered for the win on Saturday. This is my third favourite song. This is my third favourite song. And I am genuinely wishing Matt Black all the best on Saturday. I think he's going to qualify. I think that's a dead cert. Um, and I just hope he gets the position that he deserves. Because I think he was robbed last year. If it's your life, it's your life, you can make it. Wherever wind may blow. It's a chance, it's a chance. It's a chance. I'm laughing because I really like the song. I'm fully aware I am probably in a minority. Like... This song, I just find it really uplifting, like any musical song would do. Um, I enjoyed this from the snippet, and I have continued to enjoy it after seeing it and hearing it in full. This is my number five. I, I do question how well it's going to do in, in the semi-final, based on the viewings that I've seen it, it's got already. Um, I hope so. I think this one's quite good. It's really, really uplifting, and... I just think the melody in the chorus is great and their harmonies, the vocals. I've, I'm not going to really say much about vocals because I think actually generally everyone had decent vocals. And that's the one thing we can say for MESC 2023 is the vocals are pretty decent all, all round. Um, I like this song. Whatever wind may blow. Whatever wind may blow. Oh, Ryan. When he hits that high note, he does it so effortlessly. Oh, sorry, Stefan. 
Um, also, I'm butchering Ryan's vocals there by trying to sing along with him. Um, I, when I listened to the snippet, I did say, oh, it's really difficult to judge the song on that snippet because the chorus wasn't evident in it. And today was the first time that I listened to the song in full. Look, there is no doubt that Ryan is a talent. And I remember seeing some of his performances in X Factor. And I just remember thinking then, I was like, oh, you know, it's a shame that X Factor isn't the route that Malta's taking because it was the route. The winner then would go to Eurovision and then they changed this kind of setup because he's evidently super, super talented talented this is his first MESC run isn't it I the song I, I, Ryan took Maxine place in regards to my 10th place um I think the song is decent it's not a song that I would rush and listen to again there's it, it, again there's not much kind of melody to kind for me for my ears anyway to attach itself to I think he's one of the dark horses, isn't he, for Saturday to give Brooke a run for her money. And I've seen that the views on his song are significantly high comparatively. And so I hope he does well just to make it a decent contest. But I I do want him to come back with a better song because I think he's really great and that vocal is amazing. And in fact, it was flawless from what I could hear today. But the song itself just lacks something for me. It wouldn't be a song that I'd go away and, and put onto a playlist. But I'm not discrediting Ryan. I think Ryan is super talented. And yeah, I follow him on Instagram as well after he won X Factor. And seems like a lovely guy. Feeling fun now. I think I know these lyrics and then it, I really don't. I really like this song. Like, I do like that kind of hark back to kind of Aerosmith feel. It reminds me of a song from Rod Stewart. When I was growing up, my nan would take me down to the river to swim in the car because um, we were poor. And (laughs) she'd have a tape of Rod Stewart and it sounds like one of those songs. I can't think for the life of me what it sounds like. I'm not claiming copyright here. I'm just saying it's within the same vein. And it was giving me a bit of kind of memory flashback. Um, I like this song. I do, I do. It's my number eight, (laughs) but still is in my top ten. I don't know how well it will do in the semi-final, um, but it stands out for me in this kind of like harking back to a kind of rock Aerosmith ballad. Probably could do with a bit like Mikhail, a bit more of a kind of polished production to it. But I think there's a lot of potential with this one. I quite like it. Me in the movies, just receive my script to sing and dance. Guess what? Pretty groovy. Um, obsessed. <laughs> I was obsessed from the original snippet. I was obsessed when I watched the live performance a few weeks back. And from that, watching the whole performance, I have listened to this song so many times. I think this song is a really, 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 really good song. And I am praying that on Thursday, whatever kind of ideas I have in my head for staging, like there are so many different ways you could stage this song. This song needs to be performed. It needs to be a performance. And I'm really hoping the minds and the brains and the team or person behind Eliana's staging gives me what I want. Because if I think they, if they do... This is going to be a moment for me anyway. Like, this has touched a chord in my heart. (laughs) For me, this is the best song in MESC 2023. It's the only one that I have listened to so many times. And it was from that initial snippet. I knew there was something about this song. Let's see how she does on Thursday. She's obviously got to get through to the final. But for me, this is the song that I'm rooting for. Eliana. Junior Eurovision royalty. Um, I really, 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 really hope that she does really, really well. This is her first MESC performance, right? So if she doesn't win this year, yeah, I hope she does well in the future. So yeah, those are my thoughts. All I want for Saturday is for there to feel like there's a competition because I remember feeling really let down. Regardless of whether I wanted Emma to win or not, I wanted a competition. It was just so evident from very quick. It just, it was Emma's the whole way. And as a result of that, it was like, oh, okay. So let me know what you think. I Who knows? Maybe I've cursed all of these 10 and none of them qualify on, on Thursday. I hope not. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Please name, let me know what you think. Um, if you're still here and you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do click the notification button so you're informed if you want to post videos. And yeah, until next time, stay safe.